Hi folks, I'm back with another system real log question. And this is an interesting one. Um, so the question is, write a system real log task to generate a clock with a given frequency in megahertz. Um, so let's go to the next slide. As a rule, uh, we should list out any assumptions or clarifications uh, before we attempt to answer the question. The, que the question states um, the input argument is a clock frequency. So it's probably a real value, a real number, or integer. Um, and we need to confirm what unit it is in. Um, again, as the question says, it's in megahertz, so that's what we're going to go with. The next assumption is the input frequency should always be greater than zero. Um, otherwise, we'll get to a situation where uh, when you're trying to calculate the period, we'll have a divide by zero error, and that gets problematic, right? Okay. The next one is, um, so typically, if you are asked to write a task, then the expectation is that the toggling um, clock output argument should be passed down to the task as a reference. Uh, otherwise, if it's uh, if it's just basically altering a global clock signal, then that's just simple. Then it doesn't need to be passed down as a reference. It will automatically uh, the task will have access um, to a to a to a global clock signal, for instance, and then it can alter um, the toggling um, of that particular clock signal. Another thing to remember is to ask about the duty ratio, which is um, what percentage of the time the clock needs to be given, or the clock needs to be high uh, for a given clock period. Um, so typically, um, this we should confirm with the interviewer, but typically it's supposed to be 50%, for instance. So 50% you want it high, 50% uh, you want low. In an interview setting, that's probably what the um, interviewer is going to ask. So we'll go with that. Last but not least, the time scale. Uh, this is an important thing to remember because that will determine the time unit and the time precision. Uh, this becomes important when we try to calculate the uh, pound delay for a toggling clock. And as you will see in the actual coding of the um, code. Uh, for this particular clock generator. Okay, so once the assumptions are known, we can begin to write a clock code for the clock generator. So now, uh, the next step is to actually start coding. So we declare a task and we make it automatic uh, because by default in system log, a task is static, uh, which means multiple calls of the same task um, is going to reference the same local variables. Uh, whereas in an automatic task, the local variables are going to be unique uh, for each task call. Also, um, since we need an output argument from the task, which is toggling, right? Um, because the output argument is like a toggling uh, signal, right? So uh, we have to pass it as a reference. Otherwise, uh, if this is instead of a reference, if it's declared as an output, for instance, then you you'll just get like a um, constant value at the end, right? So you want to make sure you pass it as a reference. Um, what else? Um, and main thing to remember is typically. Uh, reference arguments are passed only in automatic task. Uh, one more thing. So we we have uh, the clock frequency argument set as real, as you can see, which means that this can have multiple decimal places, right? The next one is the duty ratio. Um, that is also, I, I've set it to real, but yeah. Um, the, this, the clock frequency can also be an integer, right? Um, but yeah, 
it's better to have real light, I, I feel. Just makes it more flexible that way. Uh, duty ratio is also real. And what this means is that half the time we want the clock to be high, and then the other half uh, we want it to be low within a clock period. And lastly, as we discussed, uh, we are passing a reference a bit. It, this can also be logic argument. Um, this is helpful, especially if you're creating this task for a test bench, uh, which has uh, multiple different clocks, right? So um, let's say you have five clocks uh, in the test bench, and you want to call this um, clock chain task multiple times with different clock frequencies. So uh, you can have uh, these local, uh, you can have these um, arguments passed through reference, and then you end up getting the appropriate frequency. Um, uh, you get the appropriate uh, toggling clocks at the particular uh, frequencies. Next, um, I've declared um, a real clock period. Um, and clock period is simply the inverse of the clock frequency. Here, I've initialized the clock to 1. Um, and it could be 0. It depends on how you want the clock to start off with. 1 or 0, however that is. Um, so yeah, like I said, the clock period is the inverse of the clock frequency. Um, here, we are just uh, displaying what the period is, just um, helpful in a system or log task just to make sure things look okay. Uh, then the next step is basically um, actually talking the clock. Here we are using forever as we cannot use always, right, uh, within a task. Um, and as you can see that the delay is is basically multiplication of the duty ratio uh, along with the clock period. So this will ensure um, that you know for half the time you have the clock going high, uh, and then then it basically toggles to zero, and you end the task. Functions that we discussed could be added as a quick check, so we do not end up with. Um, a divide by zero situation, or um, or we end up with basically a pound, um, uh, like in a pound zero situation if the uh, value is really, really small uh, for the delay. Um, the first check to add is, um, is that the clock frequency input is always greater than zero. If it's not, as as I'm showing here, so I capture that condition and then we return at that point. So we don't end up with an error, and um, like you know, we don't end up with a divide by zero condition here. So we we just get out of this task at that point and we print out an error. Uh, the second check to make sure is um, the calculated delay value for the. Uh, clock toggle is within the time precision range. It could be one picosecond or one femtosecond. Because if the calculated value uh, is less than the resolution, it's, it, can, it will cause basically the simulation to hang. Um, and you don't want that happening because that's not really the intention of, um, of the arguments that you're passing. All right? Here we have a wave pump with a constant duty ratio. Um, and one thing to remember is the frequency is in megahertz, right? And this is the output clock. So the first um, input arguments we are passing is that the frequency is zero megahertz, for instance. So again, zero megahertz is gonna be, uh, this particular condition or this particular input is gonna get captured um, by our first if statement, and we're going to get out of the task uh, while returning or displaying an error message. So that's what that is. The next one is uh, we are, say, the interviewer asks you to give 100 megahertz, and you 
um, give 100 E to the 6 megahertz, which is clearly wrong um, because the assumption is that the input frequency is in megahertz, so you should have just given 100. But uh, if we had given it this way, um, then of course um, this is wrong. And we um, and then when we calculated um, the period um, and then multiplied it by the D, the duty ratio, uh, we are going to get a um, delay value <clears throat> which is going to be much smaller um, than <clears throat> than the time precision value. So again, uh, we are going to uh, get an error because this this condition is going to be captured by the uh, second error check that we have, and we're going to get out of the task with an error message. Um, last but not the least, um, here the uh, here in this particular um, case, we are sending 100 megahertz, and uh, voila, we end up with a frequency, uh, like a clock with a 100 megahertz frequency. Um, and it's toggling at 50% due duration. So that's about it. Um, let me know if there are any more questions or concerns, and I'll see you next time. Take care.